Welcome to the Insurance Sales Lab podcast. Uh, my guests today are two legends in the PNC space. <laughs> I've uh, Craig Bredsinger and Jason Feltman. Hey, up, hey, how are you doing, Vlad? I'm doing great. Uh, cool. Thank you for being on the on the show on the podcast. You guys put me on the spot the last time we spoke, and you guys started off <laughs> with five rapid fire questions. So I'm going to return the favor and do the same with you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Number one. Who did you idolize growing up or look up to growing up? Axel Rose, Craig, my dad. Cool. W would you rather go in the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great grandchildren? Future. Probably future. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I Me like too. that. Because I want to see all the other <laughs> stuff that's happening too. Like, there's, if there are flying cars, yeah. I mean, when is this going to happen? It's the tunnels. <laughs> the tunnels will happen. <laughs> Business partner with Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos? Oh, Elon, without a even question. Yeah, Elon. Elon. All yeah. the Bezos would be good. I think five mm. years ago, it would probably have been a 50 50 question. You'd have to, <laughs> yeah. that. now it's like a no brainer. Um, yeah. <laughs> Have unlimited first class tickets or never have to pay at restaurants again. Oh, first never class have to pay tickets. at restaurants. First class <laughs> tickets. First class. I knew you'd say. <laughs> you knew it. Well, he he well, gives well. me a hard time. He says I go on vacation every month, yeah. which it's eh, maybe it's accurate. <laughs> yeah, kids are grown up. Yeah. Rather be forced to dance every time you heard music or be forced to sing along to any song you heard? Dance. Heck yeah. I'll go with sing. <laughs> wow. Last oh, all of it. Though. Some of it's just terrible. It has to be all yeah. of it. So this is a <laughs> very serious question. And I would only ask this because you are the insurance dudes. Would you rather be compelled to high five everyone you meet or be compelled to give a wedgie to everyone in a high five? Group? Wedge to that? everyone in green shirt. <laughs> oh, high five. High I don't want to give anybody. Fives. I don't want to give anybody wedgies. <laughs> um, we played this game. My sister-in-law uh, left our house and sends me a picture. She's like, man, I can't get this out of my head. Everybody I see on Instagram with a green shirt, I want to give them a wedgie. Um, <laughs> so you guys are the insurance dudes. You got true story. 5,000 downloads a week. Something epic like that. Is that yeah. right? Your podcast? Yeah. Where did this dude's idea come from? You guys have the Tell of Dudes company. You're wearing the shirt. You have Tell of Dudes and Dudettes working for you. How did you come up with that? And why did you take this angle? It, it's got to be fun. I, I don't think that um, insurance comes across as the most fun uh, industry. It's a little bit more. And the agent himself, they they portray it in the flow commercial, what, what uh, agents are like, the dudes in suits that are hiding behind the hedges or whatever. And we just wanted to have fun. I think Jason coined it. He coined the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and when we what initially, was, yeah. Yeah, what huh? was the, okay, so we both started podcasts at yeah. the same time, but we only had a couple. Mine was just Jason Feltman, the agent journey or something like Mine that. Was and then what was, what was yours? Yeah. You leverage remember? your, leverage your, agency to maximize yeah, it was something just it was like, just something yeah. yeah so so then we were talking and craig's like why don't we do it together mm -hmm. and, and then i said why don't we just call it the insurance dudes because it's like every time we talked it was super fun and um he's a dude like I, i'm out <laughs> in california uh craig grew up in california we both say dude a lot and uh just we thought it would be the the best pattern interrupt to call us the insurance dudes and yeah. literally it came up in conversation like that fast. And we were like, okay, that's it. We'll it was like, it. Oh, that's, that is it. That's that awesome. Is it. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, and then it's he just so started rare. making, he starts making graphics instantly. Yeah. He's like, look at, I made this. You know, so <laughs> yeah. To anyone who's spent 10 seconds watching any of your videos on YouTube, which are epic. Um, like the synergy that you guys have is so compelling. And I just learned before we started here that you guys really haven't spent that much time in person together. A lot of what you do is by phone calls, Zooms, 
that you guys do. So how did this whole partnership begin? Where did you guys first bump into each other? Well, so, so I had a, uh, another company it was, a, it was a like consulting and sales training mm-hmm. and Jason actually bought the product. And so, so we started, he, he'd call and ask me questions and, and I'm like, this is like, we're just having good conversations every time we're talking. Mm-hmm. So it just, it just sort of blossomed from there. We were, um, we were talking on the phone a lot and then we started talking on zoom a lot. Like, I mean, we have just looked at each other on zoom. I mean, and it's hours and hours and hours. I, and, and the funny thing is we, we built the business. Did, did we already hit the, the, uh, the award, the click funnels the, award before we met two comma club? Million no, dollars. I don't think we, no, I don't think, no, because I think I it, it was there. just last summer, right? The last summer is the first time oh, yeah. that, okay. that we hung out. And that was a yeah. year and a half, almost, almost two years after we first met, um, we had already started business together. Uh, we were at, you know, hundred and something episodes by that, that point. And um, it, it was funny. So going back to like when Craig and I first met, I was, I called him, um, it was a sales call basically for his, um, for his consulting agency. I, I love buying courses and <laughs> Craig and if you I have a course, talking, yeah. call Jason, yeah. he'll buy it. <laughs> so Craig and I ended up like talking for like two hours. And the funniest thing was, is I ended up selling him on, on Ricochet. Do you remember yes. that? Yeah. yeah. It was like a two yeah. hour conversation. I'm like, He's well, supposed I to be selling to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ended up selling him on the, on the phone system that we still both currently use today um, in our agency. What did you use before, Craig? I do well. Okay. You made it. And it just, I mean, I thought that it was, it was great at the time because I just didn't know what I didn't know. And then, um, yeah, you look under the hood on Ricochet and it, it, you, you can't, I don't know how you could scale an agency and, and really, really maximize leads, drive down that cost per sale on leads without it. And we've now looked at, we, we said we can do it without it. Let's, let's find something. And we literally, looked at hundreds of different um, systems. There's, there isn't anything. Wow. And we don't get paid anything by Ricochet to say that. I was just going to say it's a free plug. We should. We yeah. should. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but I think they know. They know how valuable it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. So when did it go from just being a great idea to work together to an actual business partnership where you guys are partners in a real business that's making a serious impact in the a lot of agencies. So it's, well, yeah, you go. One, yeah. So we That's started we do. doing we the podcast. On each other a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we we wait to see if the other person's going to go. Both of us, and then we and both then we go. Both go the time, yeah. <laughs> so the first six months, we were doing the podcast randomly mm-hmm. and very inconsistently. But we were doing. I mean, I guess we were consistent, no, but it we wasn't were like consistent. Yeah, yeah. But there was no schedule, and I remember it being like six months in and reading everywhere. And the number one thing was when it comes to any kind of of show per se, you know, YouTube or anything else, that having that schedule and that release time and release date was a big thing. So that's when we, right around six months was when we did that. And then when we did that, we also kind of looked at it like, okay, this could be like a business because like we're starting to get some listeners here mm-hmm. and we started gaining some traction uh, when we did that schedule. So that, that was the first thing we had, we developed a process. We d- developed a schedule that we stuck to kind of like we do in our agencies. Mm-hmm. And then, um, then it was like, you were like how, you know, we should monetize this at some point, maybe do commercials, maybe. Do- so we were exploring different things. Um, that's kind of how, how we did it. And then Craig. Well, well, yeah, we, I mean, we didn't, we didn't at first, I think we thought that we would, the way that we could monetize it was with ad revenue. Mm -hmm. And as we start researching that they're talking in the, you know, a couple bucks per thousand. Yeah. Like, okay, well that's how Rogan makes money, but we're never going to have anything like those kind of numbers just because the, the ocean isn't big enough. Yep. And and so we're like, okay. And, and we did, we had a couple for a little while, we had a couple sponsors, but um, it just, you know, it was, it was nothing. It was mailbox money. And so 
we kept going back. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, and as we, uh, we, we both opened up scratch agencies back in November of 2019, or I was November, 2019, he was October, 2019. Mm -hmm. And we developed a whole process uh, on that, on, on how to, how to buy, create basically predictability around it. Mm -hmm. And, and that started working. And then people start bugging us. How are you doing that? And we're like, Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so we have the podcast with listeners and we have a thing that's getting us results and everybody wants to do this. Mm -hmm. Boom, like, you know, push them together. And we realized that that's when Teledudes was born, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, and when we first started, we weren't, I mean, we just wanted to help agents. Yeah. And that was just solely it. It was right around that six month mm -hmm. mark when we said, hey, maybe we should like put more time into this and maybe we could do some sort of business out of right. it. And then it was like, well, you know, that's when we, you know, maybe right around the one year mark, maybe a little less is when we started looking into getting sponsors and then sponsors, yeah. the sponsors, <laughs> like we, we, we were doing our goofy stuff and they're like, no, we don't, that's not yeah, you what we want. We're do, like, well, can't read it that way. <laughs> you can't read it. And we're like, okay, well then I, I don't even want to do it because this is, does he, I mean, getting paid a few thousand bucks for this and being told what to do makes it a job. And yeah. Like we don't want, I remember that. saying, just call them and tell them I, I don't, we don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I, horrible. I don't want to do that. Well, the yeah, way you guys terrible. do it now is the best way because your, your product that you're selling, that's generating revenue for you guys is something you guys personally use in your agency to write over right. 250,000 in premium every month. And what people need to realize is that you, both of you are in unique market conditions where Craig, your premiums are really low. Some of the lowest in the country. And then, too low. Yeah, too low. Like someone in Detroit, Michigan could write a fraction of the business, like units wise, items wise, and they'll make more uh, in premium. And yeah. Jason, you can't even write homeowners a lot of the times, right? So you have to right. be yeah. creative with that. Yet you still found a way to write 250,000 in premium and you're doing that on an ongoing basis right. without really having a massive team. You, you're you're both around that eight to 10 mark, right? Yeah. As far as team members, uh -huh. Jason, you said you have 11. Craig, you have 18 members. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Around so that, yeah. I'd like to get into the, the Teledudes program here in just a moment. But first, I got an email from you guys a, a couple of days ago and came from iDudes. And at the very bottom, there was a PS that said, PS, we are on a mission to thrive in an industry that is trying to automate and commoditize the true value of the agent. We are insurance dudes with the passion and mission to save the agent. So my question to you two is, are agents in trouble? If so, why? Yes. And this is what I mean when I say this, is that the agents that are not leveraging the tools that we have today are in trouble because they're it's not that they're not good it's just that their their message is not going to get out to enough people um frank down the street that might have the best agency in the world that you know has a has a dial-up phone that doesn't really you know he has file cabinets when i came into this agency four years ago it was just file cabinets it was a it was a phone through the phone company and it, i literally i have it on the floor over here it has um it's a big box that if one phone number is busy, it rolls over to the next phone number. It's this crazy box. It's worth, I guess it's worth a lot of money. I think it's like a, a relic at this point. Um, but the, the, this is what I mean by all this is that people are not walking. I mean, with the pandemic, people are not walking into the agency. They weren't doing that at my agency prior to that anyways, because of the circumstance of this agency. Um, but you can be the best agent on the planet. And if you can't get out to that many people, you're screwed. I, I mean, it's just like any other product or anything else. Um, people look at technology as something that might take over. I don't look at it like that. I look at it like tools, like in business, we're going to war every single day. And if you're bringing a pocket knife and I'm bringing machine guns and Uzis, I mean, you have no chance. Um, and that's what the market is bringing these days. They have all these tools. These, the, the big carriers have Uzis. They have a whole army uh, of, of um, 
of weaponry, if you will. And the modern agent needs to pick up the tools to be able to fight back, just to be on the, to be able to keep up. And, and we're in a super awesome time where we can keep up. If anything, yeah. we get, you know, everybody in there, uh, everybody in the US has a cell phone. I mean, almost every single person. And we can be on that cell phone, whether it be on a podcast like this or uh, a million other ways. So there's no excuse that, uh, you know, 40 years ago, you'd have to drive by, see a sign and maybe stop by. That cor street corner might have only had thousand people a week that drove by. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we can leverage the 280 million people that are all over this, uh, the US and um, get in their pockets, be in their face uh, every single day. So, yeah, there's so many ways to tell your story and then so many ways to, to acquire the new business. Mm -hmm. And let's just say you're doing leads, right? You're buying leads. Everybody says leads suck. And, and uh, we argue, they say leads suck because they don't, the process to work those leads sucks. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. I, I remember talking to an agent and, um, and, he was asking me about buying leads and doing all this. And there's a whole thing about that. You have to understand how leads work and, and the pricing of leads and all that kind of stuff. But, but I said, how are you working the leads? What system do you have? And he said, well, you know, we just have phones and we call them. And I said, okay, well, let's dig deeper into that. What, what do you do to track your leads? He goes, well, I put them on an Excel spreadsheet. And, I, and I'm just thinking, dude, I mean, you're dead. You're, you have no chance of winning when you put your lead into an, you, you print it out, you transcribe it into an Excel spreadsheet. When I'm over here calling that same lead 90 times, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. There's there, that's the machine gun versus, I don't even know if that's a pocket knife. So, and the, but the technology is there, you know, a year and a half ago, I wasn't, I, I was the guy, not necessarily with the spreadsheet, but something slightly better, but nothing close to what I have now. We were writing maybe 70,000 on a really good month in premium. Now it's 250. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, I'm there one tenth as much, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's leveraging the technology and use utilizing the time you have, which we all have the same 168 hours in a week. If, if, if you're spending that time going through some spreadsheet, instead of having that completely automated where you don't even have to look at the leads. Why would you do that? Right. Cause then you're taken away from the other time, which is something that you do Vlad, which is coaching. I mean, there's nothing more important for your team than them being coached. They have to be coached or, the, or then they're going in with pocket knives. Right. And I know yep. you've seen it, this, this business, everybody does a quote a different way every single time. It's like, what? Like, why don't you like your, your whole, you know, follow this process, these steps. If you don't have something consistent, you don't have something to train against. You don't have something to measure against and, and, and create improvement. And yeah. when I, when I first started getting into internet leads, um, I, I found out that, you know, with live transfers, there's uh, you know, there's a, there's a limited supply. Everybody wants them because of the low hanging fruit. But then uh, the one thing with leads, the most leads that you can get, are internet leads. There's so much supply. It's incredible. There's not enough agents to actually, um, to buy them all up. Right. So then there's two options at that point. One, find the best internet leads, pay the premium, but let's be honest, leads are good. Leads are technically good sometimes or bad sometimes, right? Like they're either ready to buy right then, or they're not, or be better than anybody else at closing the leads. And then it doesn't matter what kind of leads you have, just you got to have the best process to close them. And be the best at contacting the leads. You know, yeah. I, we talk to people that, that say they're spending 25 bucks because they're really good leads. Well, dude, guess what? The contact rate on that lead is the exact same as the $3 lead. Yeah, yeah. You know? It, and you can have yeah. the greatest technology in place to get people on the phone, but if you're, people aren't trained on how to sell, then it doesn't matter how many conversations right. you have. You have yeah. team members that spend four or five hours on the phone every day, making over a hundred calls a day, but they're just not closing as much business as someone who makes, or just takes incoming calls and or uh, live transfers or makes uh, 40, 50 outbound calls a day. They're just closing a lot more business. So the there's those are two very different worlds. I think we're talking mm -hmm. about getting people on the phone in the most efficient way 
using technology. So for someone who is not tech savvy, because let's be honest, most agents don't know much about tech. Um, mm. They don't even want to learn more about tech. It's intimidating. So how could they still leverage technology and be at that cutting edge and be a modern agent in today's hire somebody that can do that. I mean, you have to put some, you, you can either learn it yourself or get somebody else that can do it, but it has to be done, you know, to your, even the original question, you're going to be left behind if you don't embrace the technology and use it. Cause, cause Frank down the street is going to, and this is a very red, red ocean, right? The, the world of insurance. Yeah. There's a, there's a million shingles out here in Tucson that, you know, every, every corner there's an insurance place. Why are they going to go to mine? They're not, they're, they're not going to walk in the door. They're not going to call. I mean, sure. We could, we could be a little bit better on Google and then we're going to get a few more phone calls, but at the end of the day to write 250 K, I mean, you have to, you have to talk to a lot of people, right? If you're closing 10%, do the math on it. I mean, yeah. how many, you know, that's a, that's a lot of people that you have to quote to get to that spot. And I would say like, like whoever's listening to this is obviously on the search to find they're they're trying to improve uh, their agency. Mm, they didn't yeah. just stumble upon this. So they're on the right path. Bottom line is model. That's what I did when I first started. I modeled what somebody else was doing because I had no idea what a CRM was, which mm -hmm. that's the one thing to look up. Look up what a CRM is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. But I modeled, I modeled. And then I, when I modeled them, I found out other agents that were doing stuff that was maybe even a little cooler than I'd model them. And I just constantly, that ball was rolling into, to what, um, into what we're doing now, which I think is the, is the most efficient system. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't close deals, but it, you know, we're making hundreds of thousands of dials a month on the, on the back and not our agency, but the, the system is, and then getting as many people on the phone over to our agents, our agents are uh, spending hours and hours and hours of talk time a day and um, doing, you know, eight to 10 quotes a day. And we just created a system and then we train on the um, like the script, like, like you, like um, what's so important to, uh, to you and to, I mean, that, that's it. Like if, if you, like, to your point, you're saying that if somebody doesn't, um, they, they don't have to talk to a lot of people to sell. You just yeah. have to be really good. But if you want to sell a lot, it's all the components together. It's being able to have a flow of people, being able to quote a lot of people and being able to close a lot of people and, and not just doing a, a, cruddy quote because we all know that it, at that point it's going to take 10 quotes to even have a chance to sell one if you don't have a, a, a rock solid uh, process so yeah um, I'd like to go deep into your guys's process how do you get people to be transferred into your agency tell us about your teledudes program and how it works well something that we something that we learned because we've it's been trial and error first Jason modeled somebody, figured it out. Then I modeled Jason and, and he, he helped mentor this whole part of, of my development in, in growing this. And, and it's not easy, right? Nothing's easy. Everything requires some work, but, but building it out and then understanding, we, we do it a lot. Like I'll say, what would old Craig think? You know, and old Craig didn't, didn't understand the importance of the cost of the cost per sale. Well, Craig didn't, didn't realize that, okay, like old Craig wouldn't be comfortable with buying 500 leads a day, spending $2,000 on, on new business. Right. But, but it took a while to get there and understanding the numbers, you have to understand the numbers and, and the beauty of, of the system is, is we know at each spot what it should look like. And the funny thing is a lot of agents will say, well, it's, you know, it's different in my market or it's different. No, it's not. It's the same. It's the same everywhere. The only thing that may be different is the close ratio, maybe a little bit less, but then you can fix that. You can figure out what you need to do. You have to have an input, right? There has to be a certain number of quotes that come in from those quotes. You know what your contact is going to be. You know, those numbers, once you have the contacts, then you, then you know what the transfers are going to be. Then you know what the quoted transfers. And so the, the whole thing creates 
very, very high level analytics into each step. So if somebody's struggling or somebody's not getting results, the first thing, like this is the agent mentality is I'm not getting any transfers. This sucks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, let's look at where it's broken first. And then we can figure out because it doesn't suck. I mean, we have evidence. We have, you know, a hundred agents that it, it doesn't suck for. So typically what we'll find, and that, this is our newest iteration of learning in this is it's coming down to contact. And so then we know it's, it's either their, their numbers spammed or, or, uh, or, or the lead quality isn't great, right? Somebody could be put, pumping sales genie numbers into there. Mm -hmm. And well, guess what? You're going to have 1% contact rate on that. Yeah. Yeah. And so those analytics, I think really, really provide a ton of insight and value. And that's again, one of the reasons why we picked the CRM that we use is because it gives you that, like we don't spend any time figuring that out. It just tells you. So the, the highest view, um, level of, of teledudes is basically you could have any size agency, even if you're a solo agent can have the power of, let's say like Geico in your own agency, yeah. one teledudette, um, as we call them, um, one of our callers can make up to 10,000 dials a month. So what does that mean? Um, our, the, the teledude system is also training. It also shows you how to put this and we call it the machine. The, and part of the machine is this. Yes, it does have to do with telemarketing, but it's even more than that. It's everything mm -hmm. from buying internet leads, being able to make the contacts, being able to call them enough, uh, the right call sequence, even how to buy the internet leads, get them through that, then getting them over to your agents. Um, and then you know, helping train your agents how to take a lead that's not warm and at least initiate the quote. And then um, producing something that's consistent when it comes to meetings, um, everything, all the analytics for the telemarketers that, to look at, all the analytics for your agents to look at. And basically it's a machine that when you, when you see that numbers aren't coming through to Craig's point, um, you can diagnose it because the machine's built. You just kind of look at each part of it and you can exactly see where the problem is. Um, and then having that machine in your agency, having your own basically telemarketing center in your agency that's virtual um, creates the, the time that your agents, that you and your agency can take to script train mm -hmm. and be able to, train that part of the machine so that now that you're having consistent quotes every day, you can actually cl close them. So it's just creating this uh, machine where the leads will constantly be followed up with um, because we realized that when agents, two things happen. When an agent, a sales agent um, is forced to telemarket, um, they will increasingly be discouraged at work. Uh, you know, we've noticed that a good contact rate of internet leads is 10 to 15%. So that means they're only going to get 10 to 15 uh, people on the phone out of 100 uh, calls, which means they're just sitting behind a phone droning out. And this person went through a lot of training, went yep. through... Um, you know, a lot to be in your agency, uh, include getting the licenses, all this stuff to sit there and just call, just keep dialing, which is a very low skill. So they're highly skilled trained, but they're doing this low skilled job. And I, we, Craig and I, uh, when we first started and looked at it, like the way we set up our agencies, a lot like McDonald's, um, in the sense where not, not quality wise, but, um, in the sense of how well, a McDonald's is trained, right? That's why Ray Kroc uh, uh, made franchises out of it because yep. he saw the efficiencies out of it. He had each yeah. part of the machine um, getting the most out of that. And when it comes to our agencies and our agents, we want to get the most out of our agents. We want our agents to sell a lot so that they can make enough money for them to justify uh, being in the position that they're in and going through all that training and stuff. And um, it's our jobs as agency owners to figure out the way that um, our agents can sell the most. Yeah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times 
when Craig and I started um, in our own agencies, we talk about it a lot is that we tell them, oh yeah, you guys got to bring in the sales. Well, as a business owner, you know, how silly would that be if, um, you know, I don't know, uh, Best Buy required all their salespeople to bring people into the store and they just didn't do ads or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's just not how business works. So it's our job as business owners to create a system where um, we can be uh, assured that every day there's a virtual line out the door of clients ready to be um, uh, helped and their problem solved and, um, you know, being you know, selling them what they need and then having the agent who is trained and that's constantly uh, talking to these clients and being able to, um, pro- you know, solve their problems and, and welcome them into the agency. So, yeah. And so we, we've even crunched, we've, we've even, even crunched the numbers on that to, to Jason's point on the, on, on those very things. You, you can't have, not only is it discouraging for the producer if they're if they have to go hunt, but there aren't enough hours in the day. Mathematically, there are not enough hours in the day for them to make the dials they need to make to make the leads work and do the 10 quotes, their 10 quoted households that they need in order to generate the revenue for the agency that makes them worth being there. So, you know, just mathematically, it's not even possible to do it. It requires a 16 hour workday. And that's where you go, okay. Of those 16 hours and of those activities, where is this highly trained person best suited to be doing quotes, right? Doing quotes Mm -hmm. all day long, right? And I mean, I remember pre-machine, I mean, my people weren't on the phone for, even then, they still weren't on the phone for four or five hours like they are now because being on the phone sucked. Like it was was hunting and they didn't want to hunt. And, you know, a lot of us come, like I come from old school where I was making dials, I was doing all these things. And I used to think, well, I had to do it. So they should have to do it. But mm-hmm. that kind of thinking is doesn't work. You don't, you can't create a culture when you have turnover constantly because the job sucks. So if you create a, a situation where here, you're feeding them. Well, great. Now they're writing 40,000 in premium each. And if they're writing 40,000 in premium each, everybody's making money, right? They pay for themselves. Because I may pay them seven thousand for for their with the base and the commission off of forty thousand, but guess what? That would have taken three people, the old way, and and they would have turned over anyway. So what's the cost of that turnover? There's hard and soft costs associated with all of that turnover. That plus gray hair, you know that 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 comes with that. And so having a culture and in both of our agencies, I, I mean, before the thing I, you know, I said, I had to let a couple people go, but in the last year, nobody's left. Nobody's left voluntarily. Just most recently, two people, you know, had to be, had to be escorted out. But, but, but that's, that's a total switch from what you hear. It's a total switch from what I, my experience was previously. And from what you hear in agents, I mean, you ask, how's your staff? And they're going to, oh, oh, God, staff's the worst, right? They go in this whole diatribe about that. And, and it's like, you know, I love my staff. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, I don't like to call them my staff. I like to, they're my team. They're awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and they like being there. Right. We just had a like, I, I don't want to bring it up, but I'm going to I'm going to bring it up because it's because I know it's it's just crazy. I can't believe they said it. We had a we had a a uh, an event at, at the office at my office here in Tucson. Uh-huh. And, you know, my team was crushed. They had two 20, 20 K plus days in a row, which was just wow. perfect timing, perfect wow. timing. Right. But everybody, um, all the people that were there, all of the agents, some really awesome agents from all over the country they went out there. They're like, why do you, you know, why do you do this? You got, you're jammed into a room, which they choose to be in. They, yeah, they yeah, want yeah. to all be jammed in this one little room. And I have, it's a big office. They want to be in this one area, the bullpen. And, and they all asked them, you know, why are you here? And, and I mean, I, I did not tell them to say it. I can't believe, but they said, cause of me. And I, I was like, wow, you know, that isn't something that I've experienced ever. And it's the, it's the flip from, you know, providing, you provide the leads, you get the return. You provide the training, you get the return. You give them all the things that they're not getting at any other agencies. I mean, health insurance, uh, the, you know, these a higher base, like all of these things that 
people are like, oh, well, I want to do that because there's turnover. Well, there isn't turnover because of that. And so it just worked out really well. And it's, it, it's a great system. So what you guys have effectively done is you've taken a skilled position. And I believe that anybody who's licensed as a PNC producer, it should spend most of their time doing that, not leaving voicemails 90% of the day, which right. is what most team members do. So I think for agents who are listening to this that have never heard of Teledudes, this is the first time they're saying the two of you, when they start working with you guys, they pay for one or two Teledudes and the agency say has three team members, one service rep, two sales producers. What can they expect on a daily, weekly basis when they work with you guys in terms of lead transfers? How many transfers can they expect? Um, what, what's the average? Don't give me the uh, definite numbers because it really varies. But like, what are we talking about in terms of cost per transfer? Uh, like, what's the range? Uh, if you can get into that, I'd like to learn about that. Yeah, so each of our telemarketers um, usually make, they, they definitely make over 500 calls a day. Mm -hmm. um, and then it really comes down to contact rate. So if they're, um, they're transferring right around a 10% uh, of the people that the contacts that they get. So if you're having a 2% contact rate, something that awful, and they're making 500 dials, uh, that's only 10 people. That, that's only one potential transfer at that point. It's not gonna get you much. Mm -hmm. um, you see a one to two percent in your sales genie x cold dates, your old crappy data. Um, you know, with a lot of uh more like newer leads, um, you can get you know 15 uh, 15 percent uh contact rate. So then you can see with the 10 percent what, what is possible at that point. Um, but there's a there's a really cool thing. The the cool thing about the the system is it's your telemarketer. So she works for you. She's going through your data. Um, we've noticed that 68% uh, of sales happen actually between the 18th. What is it? The eighth um, and 21st. Eighth and 21st dial. So as leads come into the system, they're not going. I mean, they're they're probably going to get like one to two uh, quote because we hold them accountable to quoted transfers because. Of, a transfer without a quote is, is worthless. Um, uh, so we hold, them. That. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And which is actually makes a really cool thing. So they're all on the same team. So, you know, the teledudet really helps the agent like, Hey, did you quote them? Did you quote them? Like, we got to get this thing quoted. So they're, they're pushing your team. Um, and you don't have to, because they're both being, uh, held accountable to quoted transfers. And so you might see like two a day. Some people knock it out of the park, but you might see one to two a day the first the first week, um, you know, the second week, maybe two. But as that data gets towards those 20th phone calls and stuff, now that pipeline's filled. Now you have data in there for a few weeks. Now you can start seeing um, if you have some good data in there that you're getting a 10% contact rate. Now you're starting to see, um, we're seeing about an average of five to six transfers a day. Uh, quoted transfers today with those kind of contact rates. See, that's yeah. fascinating because uh, there are a lot of companies out there that do live transfers. And then one metric they look at is the transfer. We gave you the lead. Your job is to close it. If a person hangs up, well, that's your fault as the agent. Right. Where right. you guys take it a different, a completely different approach through feedback and talking to agents that use your program. What agents really care about is how many people that get transferred over to the agency actually get a quote. And that's the metric that you guys look at. And I think that's pretty fascinating. So um, well, I think you brought up something really important there, Vlad, and I'd like to like to address that. Yeah. So we're agents and, and we understand agents. And, and if you read our mission statement, like we truly want to save the agent. We, we want agents to be successful. I mean, we, we talk to people and we'll say, Hey, look, it may not work if, if you're not coachable, this and that, because it is a different way of thinking, but, but the lead company who gives the transfer, they don't care. We've, we've met with lead companies and they've said to us, we understand that the turnover is so high with agents mm -hmm. that, you know, we need to blah, 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 whatever. And, and it, it really struck me because they don't care. 
right? They just care about filling like, Hey, we know that we're going to have turnover with this agent because they're not going to be successful. So we need to get as much money up front and then they're going to leave in three months. Well, guess what? We have a 90, it's what was it? 97% retention with, with the teledudes. So, so people stay because we help them be successful. Those who aren't successful are not trying. I mean, that's at the end of the day, if they want live transfers, go buy live transfers, have fun. Yeah. Have fun with that. If, if you want a scalable system, then, then come and join the community because, because it's a community. Yeah. We have, we have the Facebook group, we have weekly coaching, we have coaching for the, for the, um, for their producers from, you know, our producers teach their producers. So every single piece is there to understand and know how to execute. Whereas the lead company doesn't. Um, and so, I think that that's an important, you know, that's, that's why people are successful with it. Yeah. I think the um, first time I've heard of an agency doing that at scale was uh, a health insurance, Medicare agency here in my area. I went and paid them a visit. I told you guys about this where I came over, they had like 20, 20 to 30 producers and none of them were a players. Like the agency owner said, we're not looking for the very best producers, we hire everybody, anybody who gets a health insurance license and everybody comes in, puts on their headset and they get an incoming call. They accept the call. They follow a script. They close the deal. And that's all they do every day. So their job is just so easy and they make a six figure income just by right. closing a couple of deals a day. So what makes it, uh, what makes it so convenient with you guys is that, um, you take out the hardest part of the job for insurance agents and you basically get people on the phone with the, um, the, the licensed sales producer so that your right. producers don't have to do all the telemarketing. So I think yeah, agents yeah. who are interested in, um, in learning more should definitely reach out to you guys. What's the best way to get a hold of you guys to learn more about your program? So we do a weekly uh, a call and it's actually going to be available a little bit more often than that. Uh, but they can just head to, are we going to do the, yeah, live. Yeah. Dot teledudes.com. Live. Uh, so that's com. Yeah. That and then or they can just read out reach out email as support at the idudes.com. Um either one will work. Uh or teledudes.com. You can go there. So cool. So many I'll, ways. I'll include yeah. information right here. And uh anybody who's interested in reaching out to you guys. Uh, must do that. And the other thing is if you're not subscribed uh, on the YouTube channel, what is the YouTube channel? How can agents find you guys? I think you just hit the, it's uh, the YouTube link, whatever that is slash uh, insurance dudes. If you just, it, yeah, just go to YouTube, the insurance dudes and we'll come up. There's not many other insurance dudes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for hopping on this uh, call. We'll do more of this in the future. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Love to come back. Uh, uh, thank and, you so much. And anybody listening, you want to check out Vlad's episode on the insurance dudes, which was fantastic. He brought the heat um, brought and, the heat. and your program is fantastic. So anybody listening should also take a look at Vlad's program because it is, it is fire. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Well, thank you for having us. Yep. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, lad. Yep. See ya. Thank you for watching this video. If you are an insurance agent who wants to write 100, 200, 300 policies per month, then I'd like to show you how this script can help you do exactly that. This script is what I personally used to write over 150 policies month after month after month. And many insurance agents have implemented this sales script in their agency and now are also writing over 100 policies per month. If you want to see a live demonstration on how this script works in action, then go ahead and register for my free sales training webinar. I'll include a link right below this video. Register for that free webinar and you'll be able to see exactly how the script works and you'll be able to start implementing it in your agency right away. There's no theory in that sales training webinar. I'll actually show you the script and how it works. Go ahead and register for that webinar and I'll see you there. Take care.